Hey there friends, it is me, HL Mod Tech, and I'm back with another fun extension lesson in Tinkercad. This one is being built to be used on the Glowforge. So my friends, let me show you what I've got. So this first one is finished and ready to be cut on the Glowforge. Let me show you where I built it. Now the whole premise of this is I want a phone stand that can be built using a Glowforge laser cut and having spots where it kind of snaps together out of cardboard and is sturdy so it can hold the phones that we use in my classroom. The challenge was to build one where everything interlocked and we never had to glue anything. Real quickly, let me show you how this all works. This piece is the same as this piece. And if I click on hide, you'll be able to see that these three holes actually match up with these three pegs that were right here. These four little holes right here, they actually line up with these pieces right here. And I built it all here, and then I simply did Control-D to duplicate, and then I was able to move it over and test it to see if it lined up the way I wanted it to. It was a fun way to experiment and build before I sent it to the Glowforge. Arranging these little pieces was super slick. I will ungroup one for you and show you how this works. So for me to come up with a system to align them, I'm going to use the cool fit view. I simply nudged it and I set it to five millimeters and watch this one, two, three. So I moved in three clicks this way. On the other side, I moved in three clicks as well. And then this one, I simply grabbed both the pieces and I used the align tool to get them aligned. And then I added the same three parts down here using the same technique. And that was the same technique I used for this piece right here. Let's break it apart. And you can see those are the little T's where I just created holes and I lined them up and arranged them so they went where I want. This back piece, I did the same type trick, planning for where these four holes were going to be so that they lined up where they weren't in this location because I want the little cords to be able to come through easily. Real quickly, see how these poke out way crazy far? That's not an issue if you send it away by doing the hide trick. So you just grab the part you want to hide and it goes away. When you want to bring them back, you do that. So to regroup those, I'm going to do a quick top view by clicking the top view of the view cube. And then I can draw a nice straight rectangle that touches all those parts. And I'm able to group them and make that finished part again. And then when I do show all, I can group those as well. And this was done through trial and error. Uh, this says seven millimeters because that's how thick the cardboard was, but it is also version seven of the project. And this is where I'd like to challenge you or your students to see if you can make a cooler design that actually fits in the Glowforge. Let's back out and I'll show you my steps for getting it to the Glowforge. Before I actually mess with my project, I always like to duplicate it. So that way I know that the original work that I did is never gone. Notice it says copy of a phone stand. I'm gonna quickly adjust that to say arranged phone stand seven millimeters. And then once you've got that named, then you're able to work with the original ones by going back to this page. When you've got a final design, this is the one that I laid out. If I hit tinker this, this is the exact size of the build plate. If you hit edit grid, you can see that it's 475 millimeters by 279. To change that, you have to double click to select it all and then type in the numbers. That did take me a while to get that so it did what I wanted. And then you simply hit export and we want to send it as a SVG and put it in a folder where you store yours. I've already saved mine, so I'm going to hit cancel and I'm going to head to the Glowforge app to actually cut it out. So my friends, in the Glowforge app, you simply hit upload and then find the location where you stored all your stuff. I've got a special cardboard uh, phone stand folder in there. You can see all of my different ones. Uh, this is my seven millimeter one. Let's bring it in and see what it looks like. And I'll show you how to set the settings for cutting the seven millimeter thick cardboard that I've got. All right, so I'm going to drag it into place. Um, down at the bottom, there was some plastic tape. Uh, I have learned that sometimes if you don't look at your cardboard and there's tape underneath it, you will not as cut as well in that area, so it is good to keep an eye on that ahead of time. 
Uh, I have set settings for the different thicknesses of cardboard. Um, I've got one down here that I do that is three passes, uh, 200 speed, 100, and it's set for five millimeters because most of my cardboard was five millimeters. So I'm gonna just real quickly change that to seven millimeters and I'm gonna make it 175 because I want it to be just a little bit slower as it does this cutting. Alrighty friends, it is magic time. Alrighty friends, so a couple things to remember. Whenever you're working with cardboard and a laser cutter, make sure you monitor it as you're cutting. Uh, if you don't have those settings right, you can start a fire, which is something you never want to do. Uh, when you are finished, you can see here my three phones sit on the stand. There's room for the charging cord to get through. Uh, they simply snap in, just like I mentioned. Uh, it is super slick. It's sturdy. Uh, it was also possible, so remember how this is 7 millimeter thick cardboard? I just simply duplicated the part and uh, changed those to 5 millimeter holes and made it so it would fit different sizes cardboard as well. It's that easy to adjust and turn your project into whatever you want it to be. So ladies and gentlemen, if you're out there and are looking for a challenge, I'd like you to try and make one better. One flaw I can see already now is I did not push this rectangle further back so that the uh, charging port doesn't actually show up where I want to. And these are just the little things that I'm figuring out by trial and error. I've moved all of these supports in different locations and I just keep coming up with smarter ways to make a better triple phone charger for what I'm using in my classroom. And it's a cool project for you as you learn how to build with a free resource and using Tinkercad and your Glowforge. So my friends, if you found this useful, please hit that like button. If you've got a question, comment, or a suggestion, add it down below. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Smash that subscribe button. And last but not least, hit the notification bell if you want to be the first to know when there's a brand new video from me, HL My Tech. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.